friends welcome back to raju notes channel your weekly current affairs updates today we will do the current affairs updates from 21st of may to 28th of may 2022 and if you're new to my channel i'll request take one second and press that subscribe button and encourage me and also pass this information to your friends as well The first news now is coming from Australia. After wishing to strengthen the comprehensive strategic partnership and shared priorities in Indo-Pacific region, Prime Minister Narendra Modi also congratulated the Albanese Labour Party minister Mr Anthony Albanese who is now the new Australia's PM. He had secured a victory in the Australian national election and it sets a new leadership under him. So we all know that Australia is also a part of Quad. So having good relations between India and Australia is of very much importance. So new name to be remembered is Anthony Albanese. The Department of Consumer Affairs on Monday has cautioned all the restaurants across the country that if they are forcefully making customers pay the service charges it shall be violating a major rule and it can be severely punished so as per the department of consumer affairs the entry of a customer in a restaurant cannot itself become a constructed as a consent to pay the service charge and collection of any such charge is voluntary and at the discretion of consumers and not mandatory as per law so consumers are can approach the consumer dispute redressal commission or forums for in case they have any problems so this is a very clear cut rule that in case now you are going to any of the restaurant you cannot be uh, mandatorily charged the Uh, service charges if you are not willing to this comes after a hyderabad restaurant was fined for forcing a customer to pay the service charges it was i think fined for the four times the fourth edition of quad leaders summit has been concluded in tokyo on 24th may 2022 This was the second in-person summit of the quadrilateral security dialogue, also called as Quad. It was uh, attended by Prime Minister of Australia Anthony Albanese, President of USA Joe Biden, Prime Minister of Japan Fumio Kishida, and Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Some of the key highlights of this meet were: first was the announcement and the formation of Indo-Pacific Partnership for Maritime Dominance Awareness, also called as IPMDA, which facilitates faster, wider, and more accurate. maritime picture in real time the second was the sharing of data as part of the quad satellite data portal that would enhance cooperation among the member countries satellites third it welcomed the progress made for the johnson and johnson vaccine production at biological e labs in india under the quad vaccination partnership fourth the russian ukraine war was also a major part of discussion in the summit and during the summit the quad was launched about it was decided that about 100 students from the quad country will be sent to us each year to pursue degree courses in the stem that is stem stands for science technology engineering and mathematics field Biologists in Norwich have used CRISPR technology to alter the genetics of tomato. The result is enzyme inhibition that prevents a vitamin D precursor from being converted into cholesterol. The British scientists claim that eating two gene edited tomatoes a day will elevate the common vitamin D deficiency in most of the consumers. The process of editing the genetics of the tomato will push them into the UK's novel food category, but they will not be deemed as a genetically modified organism. in a bid to shorten the uh, approval time so probably this might come as a savior for people who have uh, loss of vitamin d and thereafter having troubles in their health due to this issue the chinese and russian air forces conducted a joint aerial patrol on tuesday over the sea of japan east china sea and the western pacific The patrol, the first since the Russian invasion of Ukraine, was part of an annual military exercise. The two countries have previously held such a patrols in 2019, 2020, and 2021, but in the later half of the year. 
Russia has faced a barrage of sanctions from Western countries over its February 24th invasion of Ukraine, which it calls as a special military operation. Beijing has not yet condemned Russia's attack and does not call it as an invasion but has urged a negotiated solution. We all know that Russia is uh, looking forward to China and China is holding the hands of Russia as of now uh, and as of Ukraine war. But this timing is also of importance because when the Quad summit was going on, we heard news of these two planes were flying very close to Japan where the Quad leaders were present. So just a point to note. We all remember Tedros Ghebreyesus, uh, the WHO chief, for uh, his time during the COVID. Uh, same Mr. Tedros has now been re-elected as the Director General of the WHO for a second five-year term by the UN Health Agency member countries. Notably, no other candidate had challenged the post for which Tedros was contesting and he now has another five years tenure at the WHO. But the question to ask is WHO of any use? Has it any relevance like UN? A question mark which looms large. A shocking yet a very bright uh, moment for India, the International Monetary Fund IMF chief uh, Kristalina Georgieva said that I quote, I don't do have an appreciation for the fact that India needs to feed nearly 1.35 billion people but I would beg India to reconsider as soon as possible. Unquote. Well, these are the words of IMF chief. IMF chief are same one which puts people, countries into the grey list, black list and uh, plays a very big role in giving loans. That chief is now saying words like begging India after India's ban on wheat. Well, India has done a, took a very great step of banning the wheat first to fulfill its own uh, internal needs and thereafter to export. So I think after post wheat, I think now the next part will be to take stock of the rice situation in India and also first fulfill our dreams, uh, our stocks and then uh, export it for the others. Continuing on the same line, now the centre government has imposed restrictions on sugar export for the first time in six years and this was to, it was done to maintain domestic availability and the price stability of the sugar in the country during the season 21-22 that is basically from October to September and central government uh, will regulate the sugar export with effect from June 1st till further orders. So uh, as of now the government will allow sugar export to up to 100 lakh metric tons for the other countries. Uh, initially we had a ban, complete ban on sugar export to Bangladesh but we have opened it as of now for Bangladesh. So again now after wheat, rice and also sugar. So you see slowly India is also taking in the role of feeding the world other than being the pharmacy of the world. So it's a very good step. India is progressing. India's um, uh, Union Minister for State, uh, that is for Science and Technology, Dr. Jitendra Singh, had said that India's first manned space mission, manned space mission will be launched in 2023, that is the next year, which will be followed by another space mission. And uh, as of now, India has got capabilities of launching space missions. We tried Gaganyaan, which failed at the last moment, but that's a different part, different story altogether. But India's first manned space mission is all set to be launched in 2023. So I think we should uh, be on lookout for that. We already have our uh, the uh, pilots undergoing training in uh, Russia for this space mission. The noted Jammu and Kashmir separatist leader Yasin Malik has been sentenced to double life imprisonment in the 2017 terror funding case by Delhi court on Wednesday. Though NIA had sought a death penalty for Malik who had earlier was convicted in the case by the court, notably this time Malik had pleaded guilty to all the charges including those under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act UPA and uh, uh, though despite him uh, pleading guilty to all this there are uh, so there were statements coming from pakistan and also from the oic which condemned yasin malik's sentence for life wherein india has uh, given out a very stern reply to the oic 
organization or Isla uh, Islamic uh, committee that uh, this is an internal affair and the OIC should not encourage uh, terrorist and separatist leaders like Yasin Malik. Yet another step for opening the doors for women in the armed forces in India, Captain Abhilasha Barak has created a history in India by becoming the first woman officer to join the Army Aviation Corps as a combat aviator. And she has been awarded the coveted wings along with the other 36 Army pilots who got commissioned. So a good news for the ladies who wish to join the armed forces in India. Now yet another avenue is open. You can be a combat aviator now. A tragic incident coming from US uh, on Tuesday that is on 25th of May an 18 year old uh, student killed about 19 students in a Texas school before shooting his grandmother and um, this has led to a huge rage and debate in US as to the present gun laws. Uh, you would be shocked to see that in US if you are uh, a minor you cannot go and purchase a lottery ticket or you cannot go and purchase a medicine or you cannot go and purchase uh, probably uh, a pack of cigarettes but it doesn't matter whether you are 18 or not you are a minor or a major you can easily walk into any gun store and pick up a gun so this is what is leading to a big chaos and now they are discussing uh, the gun laws in US Texas so they are as of now it is uh, man they are making it mandatory to be at least uh, you know one to, to be in 21 years of age to have a gun uh, license and also he should not have any prior felony convictions but it takes a lot of effort this must be implemented because nowadays we are seeing this the killing sprees at on at large and especially in us where are though there are no regulations on these guns if you recollect we had discussed that any war is money for us so in that race for money the uh, defense or the manufacturing companies of guns are making it as a toy in every child's hand so such laws are required and what do you think about indian laws is it good does it need any change do let me know in the comments below next news is from the world of sports world number five rafael nadal uh, had defeated the continent mortalet and in the second round of the ongoing French Open to become the third man in tennis history to record 300 glams, Grand Slams uh, matches win. Nadal is now behind uh, Roger Federer, uh, 369 wins and Novak Dojovic's 324. Uh, Nadal will now take on Dutchman, uh, it's a big name, I probably just might be reading it route, Bot Botic Van de, Van de Zandskalf. <laughs> I in the third round on Friday. I'm sorry for that name. Yet another diplomatic win. Uh, now, if you are, if you have taken co-vaccine and not a COVID shield or any other vaccine, there were some restrictions on your foreign travel. Now, Germany has recognized co-vaccine -vaccine as a legitimate uh, COVID vaccine, and it has now allowed people who have taken co-vaccine to travel with this certificate and uh, it's a very good thing for India we are slowly slowly getting more and more countries on board which are recognizing the homegrown vaccine called as co-vaccine in the last to last week's update we had noticed as how china had made inlands into the solomon islands and how solomon islands prayed that it will help and support china on all possible ways thereafter us had reacted very strongly saying that it will intervene in case the solomon islands or china uses those for any kinds of action against the quad countries after that the chinese foreign minister wang yi has said that china has signed a security pact with solomon islands and has no intention of building a military base there so there it is it is uh, uh, coming out now saying that it will not build a military base so, uh, so a good thing uh, some kind of a pressure now working on the solomon islands via china 
just as we discussed uh, the world's top rice exporter india is reportedly not planning to curb any rice exports as it has sufficient stocks and the local rates are lower than the state set support prices therefore the concerns which were aired by the who and various other uh, organizations that uh, now there will be a scarcity of rice around the globe post pandemic uh, as of now india has said it will not stop the uh, exports of rice to other countries but yes this is certainly a weapon in our hands and we should use it for our uh, diplomatic gains as well well now it's time to see some of the updates uh, like what happened this week in history and uh, we will see what happened what were the events that happened from 21st to 28th of may back in history In May 21, 1991, Rajiv Gandhi, the Prime Minister of uh, India, who was the youngest one, was assassinated in a suicide bombing in Tamil Nadu by uh, probably LTTE separatist uh, uh, individual, and uh, it uh, the assassination uh, was done because he had sent the Indian peacekeeping force to Sri Lanka and to fight the, the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Nadu. 22nd May 1772 Raja Ram Mohan Roy was uh, a born uh, the the he, Raja Ram Mohan Roy was a religious social and a educational reformer in India who charted the course of progress for Indian society under the British rule as the founder of Brahmo Samaj and the father of Bengal resistance he renaissance sorry he played a crucial role in abolition of social evils like sati system his singular freedom based bias for all kinds of country that was torn by tradition made him a true raja may 23 1995 uh, on this day about 27 years ago sun microsoft system announced java 1.0 and netscape license java for its browser before java c++ was the dominant program language and java was intended to tackle most of the tasks that c++ could Uh, do while avoiding some of the complications this class based object oriented language was effective for the client server web applications and now for the androids the uh, ven- well, uh, venerable language has remained popular ever since and uh, its rivals like uh, uh, it has some rivals like python and go now uh, in the complete hearts and minds of the people so java was unveiled in 1995 that is 27 years ago also this week on 24th of may 2002 20 years ago president george w bush and vladimir putin signed the strategic offensive reductions treaty that is called as sort sort under which the united states and russia agreed to reduce their strategic arsenals uh, from 1700 to, to 2200 war, warheads each the us rejected any limit that would require the elimination of delivery vehicles and warheads sort was replaced by new start start on 5th february 2011 the new start which bought the number from 15000 uh, 1550 to on each side was extended for another 5 years in 2021 on 26 may 1897 about 125 years ago irish author bram stoker unleashed count dracula on the terrified audience and changed the nature and the stature of the horror writing the rather simple plot involves a transvelian noble woman and a vampire who moves to england after exhausting their body's uh, blood supply of uh, his local population so a charming and uh, handsome the first count Uh, the count first kills the ladies with his looks and then world's favorite vampire kills them f- for real only to make them undead thereafter well this st- series rather series started in 1897 on may 26 1935 87 years ago 
in just 45 minutes jesse owens set four world records at the big 10 track and field championships these are considered the greatest 45 minutes in sports jesse owens went on to win four gold medals in seven days at the 1936 berlin olympics shattering nazi leader adolf hitler's claim of aryan supremacy back home in america the champion was subjected to humiliation and rather lot of humiliating racial discrimination. Owens was made uh, to run on tracks but against running against the dogs and he had to do that to make a living. So discrimination everywhere but Jesse Owens a god on the athletics field. The month of May or the week again a yet another blow for the Gandhi family on May 27, 1964 uh, 58 years ago, Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India, died aged 74. And uh, uh, before 1947, Nehru was India's foremost political agitator. And after 1947, he was the one of the uh, world's finest statesmen. But he took his last breath on 27th May, 1964. Well, that's all friends I have for this week. I will see you next Sunday with more such updates. Till then, stay tuned, take care, be home, stay safe. Bye-bye.